The international border between Kenya and Uganda has little significance to the pastoral communities in the semi-arid border area between the two countries. The area is a conduit for cattle movements from Kenya, Sudan and Uganda. However, these cross-border movements have hampered disease control interventions resulting in disease outbreaks. CCTV's Alan Cherol has more. Kenya and Uganda agreed on strategies to help end vulnerability due to uncontrolled cross-border movement of pastoralists and transmission of animal diseases. A memorandum of understanding signed on the 25th of April in Moroto, northeastern Uganda, will see the two countries undertake joint immunization programs, share animal health information, and ensure more animal health personnel are in place. An international borderline between the two countries does little to deter movement of livestock between the two nations. The search for cattle markets across the border and cross-border cattle rustling between the Karamojong of Uganda and the Pokot of Kenya has fueled the transmission of animal diseases in the semi-arid region. If the interventions are not harmonized, then we have duplication because the communities are moving. They, know, they don't know borders. They are moving from one place to the other. And they can get the service here and then go and duplicate it on the other side. But if they are aware, then they are going to be synchronized and harmonized. That's the whole point. The initiative concerns to increase financial support to animal health interventions in Pokot and Karamoja, as livestock is central to the livelihoods of the population and has the power to be a substantial contributor to Uganda's GDP. It is estimated that 80% of households own livestock in the Karamoja sub-region of Uganda, representing about 20% of the national cattle herd. The Karamojong are only 2.4% of Uganda's population, but produce close to 20% of Uganda's livestock output by value. If there aren't funds for outbreak of disease, then, then this MOU will not be as useful as it could. My expectation is that this will be picked up through the national budgets, through, through the government, so there's less reliance on outside funds, and that the government will themselves fund this coordination mechanism. When appropriately supported, the pastoral production systems in the dryland areas that straddle the border between Kenya and Uganda can be resilient to disaster, such as disease, and can contribute to livelihoods in the region. The signing of this MOU will synchronize cross-border health programs between Kenya and Uganda, but the challenge of finding funding still hangs in the balance. Alan Chiroro, CCTV, Karamoja, Northeastern Uganda.